Hi, Micropunter here. This here is a dark field patch stop filter for microscope. And today I want to optimize uh, this uh, filter and I'm gonna be using some 3D printing um, to try, try out different uh, sizes and dimensions to find the optimum one. Uh, before I do that, I want to give you a short introduction into what dark field is in, in the first place for those of you who don't know. And um, I'm also gonna explain you a little bit of the theory uh, concerning how the size here determines uh, the quality of the image and then later on I'll be optimizing the filter here. So first of all um, a dark field patch stop is one of the easiest modifications that you can do to a microscope and I think every microscope owner um, should have one of those. Um, if you don't uh, have this you can easily make them yourselves either using a cardboard or using some uh, black plastic or so and I made another video uh, that explains uh, different methods and the link uh, to this video is below. Um, but uh, today I want to try yet a different method. I want to uh, 3D print them and uh, this way I can very quickly make a large number of them and I can try out different sizes here. So um, how does this work? What you have here, this is a microscope condenser and you find them uh, beneath the stage um, of your microscope, at least the slightly better microscopes have that. And many of these uh, condensers, they have either a push on or a swing out filter holder. And you can see, I can take this out here. Okay, so that is the filter holder. Um, it's blue here to uh, yeah, simply re reduce the amount of red light uh, that goes uh, through uh, to, the, uh, uh, to, to the camera then later on um, and it also gives it a little bit of more neutral um, yeah, color balance. And uh, in this filter holder here um, you can place um, yeah, any variety of, of uh, different filters and also patch stops and you just place it in here and you pop it on again and then you're ready to go. Um, and I'm gonna show you now uh, how the image quality or not the image quality, how the image changes when you um, add a patch uh, stop filter. So this uh, picture here shows uh, some radio radiolarians in regular bright field um, and um, you, you can see that the image the radiolarians are dark on a bright background and when you put in the patch stop filter the dark field filter then you can see that the radiolarians they start to light up on a dark background. So well how does this uh, now work? When you look at one of those dark field filters you're going to see that they have essentially two regions. The central patch stop which blocks out the main microscope light and the peripheral annulus. That's this uh, bright part that allows light to go through. The ring here on the outside actually is only there to uh, center the patch stop uh, in the filter holder. It has no real function otherwise. And now what happens is the following is, is that uh, the central uh, patch stop here blocks out the main microscope light so that the background becomes dark and the light uh, which uh, strikes strikes the specimen from the periphery um, this light is then reflected back into the objective and that's then causes the uh, specimen to light up uh, on a dark background and now maybe you're kind of wondering how it's possible for the light which is here on the side to actually hit the specimen which is located here um, over the center um, of the filter and that is because there is a condenser in between and this condenser has a lens here and this lens causes the light rays not to go parallel but to bounce off at an angle and that's why it's possible for the light to also reach uh, the specimen which is actually directly over the central black patch stop. Uh, however there is a problem and uh, one of the problems is that the optimum size of uh, the filter here of the patch stop also depends on the so-called numerical aperture of the objective so this basically means that the higher the magnification, the larger the central patch stop has to be in order to completely block out the light. And I'm going to simply show this uh, effect to you now. So I'm gonna use this commercial um, uh, dark field uh, filter here. And I'll be increasing the magnification from four times all the way up to 60 times. And what I want you to do is I want you to look at the background, whether the background is still uh, sufficiently dark. By the way, these are radiolarians here. Um, and their refractive index is quite different from the surrounding medium so that's why they shine up very nicely and they're very good specimens. Okay so that's with a 40 times objective and uh, look on the top right corner yes here you see that the background is still uh, sufficiently dark so the patch stop filter does work still with a 40 times objective but now 60 times objective and this is basically where it breaks down. The top uh, right corner as you can see is now gray um, there, it's not black anymore and now with a correct patch stop so that's the one I made now 
it shows that it's bad black. That that's the way it's supposed to be, uh, but it's a different patch stop. Uh, one that has uh, is a little bit larger in the center. We're gonna try it again. This one shows one where the patch stop is, is too small. The background is uh, pretty bright. I'm focusing back and forth a little bit here so that uh, you can see this better. This one, it's uh, too large, a patch stop. And the specimen itself, uh, while you can see it, uh, the tip of the radiolarian, it's still too dark. And uh, when you make the patch stop just a little bit smaller, just the right size, but not too small, then it looks like this, okay? And I've done it like this, and I did not adjust the camera settings here, so um, it was did not automatically correct for the exposure here. So you can see that the size of the correct patch stop does have a significant importance here. Same thing here. Here, the patch stop uh, size of the radiolarian uh, for the radiolarian specimens uh, is a little bit uh, too large. Uh, it looks fine, but uh, the specimens could be a little bit brighter. Just gonna show you right now. I'm just gonna switch over and this is basically the way it's supposed to be. So I quickly changed the, um, yeah, the filter and, uh, but you can also see that the background, that there are some spots in the background. This also means that there's a little bit more dust visible now. Um, and so you see that there is also a slight disadvantage of actually seeing a little bit more. Well, that was the commercial patch stop filter. And what I did is now I wanted to design my own. And I started out by simply using this as a basis and I measured out uh, the diameter um, and the central patch stop and all of these things simply to have a starting place. Um, and then I uh, started to design the whole thing on the computer and I used the free online program Tinkercad it's called. Um, all you need is you need an account, you sign in and you can edit the things directly in your web browser. It's uh, quite easy to use. I only watched a five minute um, introductory video on YouTube and then I already knew how to use the program. I've never done CAD design before so it's the first uh, time that I'm doing this. And I've uh, designed now, I tried to replicate uh, the, the same filter a little bit. And uh, that's basically how it works. And then you um, export the file and the file is then imported into a so-called slicer program. And there are also several free ones available. One of them also came along with my 3D printer. And this slicer program then converts the shape, that's the slicer right now, uh, converts the shape uh, into a so-called G-code, which is then understood by the 3D printer to be printed. So you see, uh, you have to use two different programs here. And I, I'm now printing the whole thing a little bit in time-lapse again. And uh, after a couple of minutes, I had my filter ready. Um, and if you're wondering why I'm printing it using blue uh, plastic, blue, blue filament, that the reason is, is because that's simply the one that I had uh, yeah, in place right now. I had some problems getting it off, okay? So it took me a little bit. Uh, yeah, and this is how it looks like, and I'm quite happy. Um, so I decided uh, to put it into the filter holder and I had to make some size adjustments. It was a little bit too big, um, but uh, I made some size adjustments and then I redesigned all of them again um, with different sizes of patch stops. Uh, and now I've got nine of them here. And uh, yeah, I ended up uh, printing uh, them as well um, to test out which one is uh, the best one. So here I'm printing all nine of them. And um, yeah, um, that's how it looks like uh, after a couple of minutes. Um, and the thing is, is that uh, I was a little bit uh, not so successful uh, because I had some problems actually uh, getting it off. Um, so I had to reprint everything again a little bit uh, and yeah, so this one did not really work very well. So I had several uh, problems and several mistakes and several uh, tries I had to do until I found the correct way. Yeah, this one here, that was actually the one that worked. Uh, I printed it on a raft and this uh, went off quite easily and it could separate the filters uh, much, uh, much more easily here. Yeah, and uh, then um, I simply uh, put them in and, and tried them out, okay? So... It's also a little bit of a waste of plastic, but you can see that there are some strings. It pulled some of these strings here, so the filter is not perfect. Um, and therefore I had to do some post processing, so to say I had to uh, cut away those uh, excess strings. Um, yeah, normally I would probably print them again, but uh, I simply uh, decided, who cares? We're, it's good enough for simply trying it out. And uh, I've got then my nine, uh, this way I produced my nine filters here. 
Okay, well, it's time uh, to test them. I simply uh, placed uh, them into my filter holder, to, um, now checking whether they fit well, and they all fit perfectly. And I ranged them now from the smallest uh, to the largest uh, patch stop, and I'm going to test them now individually. I'm gonna start on uh, with the one on the right side here, place it into the filter holder. It goes, uh, of course, into the condenser. And now I'm checking all of the uh, microscope objectives, of course, you have to open the diaphragm here. Now, after checked all of them, um, I'm going to simply uh, replace uh, the filter with uh, the next uh, filter, just like this. Um, and uh, then I put it again into the microscope and I'm gonna test uh, them. And uh, what I found out is the following. Here I arranged them. The, uh, basically, again, based uh, on size, but uh, three of the filters I moved a little bit upwards because these are the optimum ones. So this one, this one, and this one over there, these are the best filters uh, for the different magnification and this is the blue one and that's the commercially made one yeah, and that's basically a little bit uh, yeah in, in the center right now as you can see so um, so the one on the right side works best for the 60 times magnifying objective and the one in the middle works uh, best for the 40 times the magnifying objective and the one on the left side um, is uh, the one that works best uh, for uh, several objectives for the four times uh, the 10 times and also the 20 times uh, objective so this one works uh, fine for all three of them um, all of the other um, all of the others I'm just gonna throw away because they are not optimal either uh, they cover too much or too little um, of the um, of the uh, of the image and of the light yeah and you can see that the ones uh, on the top the blue one and the commercially made one well they are a little bit larger than the one intended to be for the 40 times but way smaller than for the 60 times objective and therefore um, it didn't work so let's uh, try it again this one is uh, the one from the 60 times and uh, now this one is with the right uh, um, right uh, patch stop and also here um, again this one is the original one and this one is the one with the correct patch stop so what about the blue one I did not show you the blue one yet well this is how it looks with the blue one a nice dark blue background a little bit like Rheinberg illumination so even the blue one does have uh, its uses and it looks also quite nice well, and if you found this video useful, then please do consider subscribing to the channel. Also, please check out uh, my microscopy shop, the Amazon affiliate shop. There is a link below. And also my other two YouTube channels, which are both microscopy related, in case you have not already done so. So that's enough for today. I wish you a nice day. Happy microbe hunting as always. And see you around next time. If you have any questions or recommendations, please do also comment. Bye-bye. All the best.